Hello guys. Merhaba. Bonjour. For oh my god, yeah. Literally. What the doctor ordered. After being sick. Nina. I have tried Webex. And very possibly next lesson will be on Webex. Today was a bit too early. Um, I need to be able to see how to change between different uh, between different screens. No, Skype is too much, Matthias. Skype is way too much. I think it might be a bit on the low side, but it should still be good enough. I gave it to our lecture this morning. I think it was fine. Check whether it, was, it is me or because I just moved away from the microphone. Let me see. Hello. Okay. I think it should be a bit better now. But I will remove the cam. Okay. Wait, what? Second. Oh, how are you doing, girl? I'm still alive. It's been a horrible few days with a fever, but I survived, so I'm back. It's it wasn't Corona, Matthias. If it were, I would have advised you to get checked. Okay? I'm a responsible adult. No, no, no. Definitely not. Yes, today is just one C. So, most lessons. Today, I just wanted to speak to you a bit. Okay? About what we're going to be doing. About changing of the syllabus for the, for the year. We're not going to be doing assets and bases. We will be doing um, aluminium and transition metals. Mainly, the idea is that there will there will not be a system where we're going to be doing assets and bases because it's. I think it's quite difficult to explain and to note what you're doing online. Now. Let's see, Nina. Yes, yes, but I discussed with other teachers, and these are the best two chapters. Stop. They are, again, there's no maths involved. It is just a lecture style, so that, of course, you can understand, and hopefully, if you don't understand, you can just look at the video over and over again and see what I'm saying. I think it's the best solution for all of you. So this was my proposal to the school. Yannick, don't. Please, please don't. Now, so what's the plan? The plan is this. In a certain basis, I was going to start introducing dative bonding, properly dative bonding. Now, this is something that I still need for the next two chapters. So I'm going to speak about dative bonds. I found the PowerPoint. I didn't change anything from the PowerPoint, so let's make that clear. Because um, 
I think it's a very, very good PowerPoint. Matthias, try and see if you can actually stop the stream for a few seconds and then start, uh, then continue it. She got under the Kalam, she called Makalma, he's a robot. Moosh, Habayanik, I had to hit me, no, Emma, pretty comment, he had Veras, come to the Kalam for camera. She got under at Nia Fina. It's not comfortable, believe me. Well, one second, let me try and hear what you're hearing. Okay, give me a few seconds. Okay, the sound is a bit tragic. I don't know why, because I just gave a lesson this morning. Please, tell me it's improved. I still think you can hear it fine. I'm going to try something else. But I just want to see if you can hear me for now. That's the important one. Can you hear me better? Yes. Because if you can hear me better like this, I can deal with it. No, no, no. Okay, let's go back to the what I was using. I'll buy a new mic. I don't know why this is happening. So, dative covalent bonds. What is a dative covalent bond? Here, it's going to be something that we have introduced. Yes, I, I changed back to how it was before. Here, it's to how it was introduced. Uh, we have introduced this in bonding, but we haven't really discussed in bonding. Now, in reality, what a dative covalent bond is, is a special type of covalent bond. And the covalent bond is the sharing of two electrons. Let's make sure that we understand that a covalent bond is the sharing of two electrons. Are we all clear on this issue? Are we all comfortable saying that a covalent bond is the sharing of two electrons? Because if we're not, then that's something we have to tackle. Now, I can see that there are a few students who are not online. Whilst this can be is a live stream and you can see it afterwards, I think it's not fair on me and on your colleagues if you are not online during live streams. Apart from this, yes, you can actually jump streams to your friends. Okay? So you can, I don't mind if from one C there are some students from one A or from one B. I intend to do the same lessons. But please try and tell your colleagues to at least attend to one live stream. Now, that's fine, Nina, Nina, it's not your fault. You've done a good job, brilliant, amazing. Great, you all know what a bond is, what a covalent bond is. Now, in a covalent bond, you have the sharing of one electron. Okay, 
from coming from each atom. So in a covalent bond, no radiation sharing of one electron coming from each atom. So a dative covalent bond is a special type of covalent bond in which both the shared electrons are contributed by one atom only. What does it mean? It means that the two electrons from for the bond are not coming equally from two atoms, but they are being given by the same atom. Okay? So, it can be defined as a covalent bond in which both electrons of the shared pair are contributed by one of the two atoms. Let me repeat this. It can be defined as a covalent bond in which both electrons of the shared pair are contributed by one of the two atoms. Now, such a bond has multiple names, including, and I want to say this, including a coordinate bond. It's important, these names you need to know, mainly because in the coming chapters, I will use them all the time, and I'm not going to be telling you this is a dative bond as well. Dative bonds and coordinate bonds are the same. No, no, Emily. For now, forget ions. Okay? For now, we're just saying you have two atoms. One is, being contrib is contributing two electrons to another. It doesn't have to be an ion. I, I will be doing some examples later on, and I will be showing you some examples here. Um, I can send you the presentation, Matthiasta. No need to write notes. Listen, with regards to covalent bonds, you have some notes on the book. Presentations that I will be using, I will be sending you. I will be changing a little bit my normal Yannick. I will be changing the way I was teaching at school because, of course, it's a very different situation. Please do tell me what you're finding best in these lessons. I mean, this is the second lesson. But do tell me because this might be for four weeks, this might be for two whole months. I want to make sure that, in all fairness, you can understand whatever we're doing because this is for you guys. You have to be comfortable because otherwise, if you're not comfortable with what we're doing, the lessons are going to be a success. I want to make sure that you do not fall behind. I want to make sure that you're understanding. I need to be either for three weeks until the end of the year, or it could be till the end of the year. I don't know. Nobody knows. Individually, Matthias. We don't know what's going to happen. The end of this month, we should hear something with regards to the A11s. So if someone was going to do the A11s this, this May, or in the this May, there is going to be something from the ministry soon. Okay? But you have to wait. We don't know. If I were to tell you that I know something, we don't know. Matthias, I don't know. I'm pretty sure no one's going to repeat the air. I'm going to say what I'm going to be doing. Okay? Well, first and foremost, if we don't come back, and that's a big if, because at the moment we will be back, we will be back at school on the 21st of April. But if we do not come back, I'm going to do my utmost to help you guys learn what you have to learn. If that means, and this is again me, but if that means doing some work in summer, I don't mind. But 
that is all speculation. Okay? For now, wait, see what's going on, and relax. Try to relax. Let's understand the qualitative bond. This is today, that is all I'm asking of you. Okay? These lessons will not be 35, 45, an hour long lesson. These lessons will be short, sweet, to the point. Okay? And you can see them over and over again. I will be naming the videos later on because one of your colleagues was right in saying that I should be naming the videos. And that will give you an indication of what's going to happen. But for now, assume the 21st of April, you will be back. That's all that is asked of you. Okay? Let's go to the dancing. So, once you have a coordinate bond, it can be established where you have one of the two atoms has a full outer shell and a non bonding pair of electrons, and the other atom is one pair short of a full outer pair of electrons. Now, we're speaking about atoms here. Of course, these, at these atoms could be part of molecules, and these atoms could have lost or gained electrons to be ions. Okay? But you need to have two different atoms. Atom A and atom B. Atom A is going to be an atom that has at least one lone pair. A non-bonding pair of electrons is a one lone pair. And it needs to have a full outer shell. Atom B needs to be electron deficient. Now, with regards to electron deficient, up till now, we have worked with two groups, or with two atoms pretty much. Beryllium and aluminium. If you want to draw beryllium and aluminium, let's draw the chlorides, we can see that these are electron deficient. So, let me show them on the board that these are electron deficient. means that both beryllium and aluminium there, they are electron deficient. Okay, now, this means that they can actually find something that can give them an electron. For now, focus. Everyone understood Wait, what's inverted? Ah! Oh. <laughs> okay. Okay, that's fine, I'm fixing that. Did you all understand that aluminium and beryllium are electron deficient? For now, that's what I care about. Okay. 
It's fine, Michael. For now, I am explaining that it's electron deficient. Johnny, you haven't done Lewis atoms and Lewis acids, okay? Mainly because that's something we want to do with the same basis. Now, I'm going to give this as a word. I don't want to sound uh, really annoying, but because we're doing these two chapters, pay attention to the proper lessons now. Because transition methods, it's not something that's going to be done before the second year. Okay? Just take a note. I think now that's better. Okay? Yes, very low. Is it sufficient? It can't really do native bonds because it won't be too happy with it anyway. There are certain circumstances, but for now, I just wanted you to speak and to note that you have electron deficient compounds. Okay? I wanted to note the electron deficiency. Okay? Now, let me change the screen. And this is what I'm afraid I can't do on Lovex Nina, where I can change screens all the time. So, A, full octet and lone pairs. B, it has one pair missing. So, what can happen? These two lone pairs can be shared with B, okay, and form a bond between A and B. So, what happens then? If you were to count the electrons, it would be 2, 4, 6, and bond 8, 2, 4, 6, and bond 8. But both electrons forget the terms Lewis base and Lewis acids. These are two things we haven't covered yet. Nina, forget them. I mean, you might have done them at private lessons, some people, others might not. We haven't done them. We'll be doing them when we do a certain basis, which probably will be now next year. Okay? So, sorry, I will be to repeat. Sarah, you told me to repeat something. What do you want me to repeat, please? So let me repeat this then. I, it might be it, it might not, just ask. So, A can give electron pair to B, because A has 8 electrons, it has a lone pair, B has 6 electrons, and it requires 2 electrons. Okay? So A can interact with B. And that, it would look something like this. Now, we should not be drawing shells, even in VSPR, but it's okay to draw these for your own sake. Some people AL would have a full shell. Mikael, I haven't actually done data bonding for B and AL. I only drew B, E and AL to explain that these are electron deficient. Yes, but yes, we're going to explain them. That's what we're going to explain. Okay? Now, so you can draw this, the... Aluminium chloride, aluminium has six electrons, they're not three. Each, each bond is 
a pair of electrons. can get away without drawing the shells. Okay? And H E Janine. Aluminium with aluminium chloride. It has six electrons. Because you have each bond is a pair of electrons. Can you see that there are three bonds for aluminium? If each bond is three electrons, how oh, electrons it is six, six electrons. Now, a covalent bond we can represent it by an arrow. So remember, in organic chemistry, we represent a tijri, Michaela. Yes, but a tijri. An electron, oh, in organic chemistry, we represent the movement of electrons with arrows. Okay? Which means that because we are representing the movement of electrons with arrows, we can say that the two electrons have gone to B to form a bond. What is a bond? It's a sharing of two electrons. They're both coming from A, so we can draw an arrow. Okay? This is the arrow you've seen in the video. You can or cannot draw it. So it doesn't really matter. You may or may not. If you draw it, it's better. Normally, I would highly recommend that for said structures, you draw. But you don't have to, okay? Especially if you're not entirely sure where this bond came from. So the covalent bond is represented by an arrow. Pointing towards the acceptor as well. So acceptor is B, donating is A. So, the atom which contributes the electron pair is called the donor, while the atom which accepts it is called the acceptor. The type of covalent bond, bonds form, is distinguishable from regular covalent bonds. This is important. Once you can draw the arrow, once you form the covalent bond, there is no difference between the two. So it is a normal bond. You tend to draw the covalent bond as an, uh, the covalent as an arrow, simply because you just want to show where the electrons came from. But once it's formed, it is exactly the same. Are you understanding, Domina? I think the stream is so actually that's the problem. But it's not loading for me. move a few tabs. Now, I think it should be a good point to call me. I call, I mean, it's Len here, but I think it's the internet that's playing. So, a compound formed via native bonding can be called a coordinate compound, an addition compound, or an adduct. 
not that important, but good for you to actually know the difference, okay? They are all the same, so there's no difference. If you were to read these in a book, if you were to read these in notes, they are exactly the same. Here are some examples of coordinate bond formation. So, ammonia with boron trifluoride. Before we act I actually show you two pictures, can you all Okay. Can you all draw ammonia? Yes, I changed it. Can you all draw ammonia and boron trifluoride for me? I'm gonna give you three, four minutes, okay? Two minutes each. Draw ammonia and boron trifluoride. While it's still drawing, I'm gonna check a few things, huh?
Y bueno, no, ya, en Boloncho de Flores, Liz. So, that's ammonia, it has a lone pair. Boron trifluoride has only six electrons. So it has three bonds, two electrons each, six electrons. Which makes that the ammonia is full octet with a lone pair. Boron trifluoride is um, electron deficient. What happens? You can give the electrons from the nitrogen to the boron. Nitrogen to boron. Same goes here. Nitrogen to boron. You can see that the arrow. So if you want to draw a dative bond, the best way to do it is to draw the individual components and then draw an arrow from the lone pair to where it's going to be received. Okay? So, ammonia, boron trifluoride, arrow, and you get your compound. You can also have the ammonium ion. So, the ammonium ion is something very similar to what we've done before. You draw ammonia, you draw the proton, so hydrogen, and you do a dative bond. Now, of course, because you start with a positive charge overall, your product will have a positive charge. Remember, you need to conserve your charges. No charges, you have a charge. Okay? Now, as Michaela has previously said, there you can write a positive and a negative here. For now, we don't do them. Okay? For all intents and purposes, for A level, that is not done. This is the structure you need to draw. Well, here you put it in the square brackets, but yes, because you need to ensure that the positive charge is on all the ion. It's not just on the hydrogen anymore or on the nitrogen, it's on all the ion. Now, of course, in reality, the positive charge is for the nitrogen here, but it is distributed all over equally. This is similar to whether you draw CO3 to minus overall, or else you have C double bond O, O minus O minus, or C O to minus two thirds, O minus two thirds, and O minus two thirds. They are all the same, it's just different ways how to write them. Now, characteristics of, co of coordinate compounds are ordinate ones. Melting points and boiling points are higher than purely covalent compounds, but lower than ionic compounds. They are normally... In ammonia, it's not, but of course, if you have pi bonds or p orbitals, then it will be ionic. But in ammonia, it's not. It's a normal charge. Okay? But... Like in carbonates, in carbonates, you normally know, we, we used to draw it as CO3 to minus. Why? Because we used to draw it as to, to minus over the whole structure. But don't. Oh, God. They are sparing the soluble. And like covalent compounds, they are also poor conductors of electricity. So if they had were to have full charges, they would have, they would be good conductors, okay? But 
they are very poor conductors of electricity. Thank you for this. If you have any questions with regards to negative bonds, now is the time to ask them. Now let's actually unmute Yannick because I feel guilty. I told you, I, using the PowerPoint I found, no, I didn't get to the last slide to see the communist flag. But remember, at the moment, we have a lot to learn from China on how to deal with the coronavirus, as long as what they're saying is true. GHG. Let's see if this is the last slide, okay? Mela, Janine, dative bonds will always have a small charge, a full charge, not a partial charge. But for all intents and purposes, for A level, these are not important. Okay? So, no, Lea, 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 no. Radicals are something completely different. Okay. Radicals unpaired electrons in in an or, in organic in organic chemistry. You've done the free radical mechanism. So a mech radical is here, an unpaired electron, literally. Electron limanda ilhat. And H4 plus is not a radical. Unless NA4 because it's not a radical, eh? it's a compound ion, it's called. I know that some teachers used to teach these as radicals with regards to O11. They are wrong. They are wrong, okay? So they are called compound ions. Radicals are the ones. Radicals are unpaired electrons. They are middle two for organic chemistry. Bonju. They are middle two more gambine. So, flalcanes are the mechanism. You are free to the mechanism. Janine. This is a dative bond. This is neither intermediate nor ionic. This is a dative bond. It's a type of covalent bonding, dative bonding.
NA for plus is a nine. It's like NA plus, like A plus, like BA2 plus. Juan, how will it be achieved here with the Madwari? Okay, what could we eat for? I think. Look, I think it's the start of the video. We're ready to finish. I like it, Night Lag. I like it. You can go to our name. You can click the link. No, no, it's hardly enough to check. You can click the link. Hardly. To our mall, one B. عشان يستعب بالوان بي ات تولف تعالي لقى اسب دول بدو اوكي جانين he's not your responsibility anymore هاللي خيب علي ات خيطا علم he's 16 he's old enough يلنا خان هالليكم I see you tomorrow. Matthias, no need to be an asshole. I'll, I'll try, okay? I think... Tomorrow WebEx might crash, ma. I thought that had to be size one. No more seventeen. Well, I'm off. You can find I'm not gonna be here. Welcome, see you.